Hey, we're two fat guys. And we just watched Spider-Man 3. I think you should get it. Enemy in the Reflection. <laughs> nice Russian reference. Yep. I really think you should have gone. Spider-Man 3. That's about how I feel. That's, yeah. I think it just summed up everything I could possibly say about this movie in that. You know what's great about this movie? J. Jonah Jameson? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, he's he's not in it nearly enough, but the yeah. oh, the scenes he has, we were we were we were physically in pain from laughing. <laughs> and him and Betty Brant with the pills and uh, oh yeah, um, every uh, everything about J. Jonah Jameson snuck him in the last fight. Yeah, and yeah, put him, in, see, no, yeah no. put him in the last fight, which was good because needed it. He needs to be everywhere. Um, Anytime I have him, Mary Jane, and Peter are talking, he should just be in the background, like on fire, <laughs> doing something like "I'm on fire." That's weird. <laughs> Parker, what are those spontaneous human combustion things? <laughs> so we get photos. Oh man, front page news. He's fantastic. <laughs> oh, he's he's perfect, and he should be in every. This should be a movie about him. I don't even care. Oh man, I would watch a J. Jonah Jameson standalone movie. This is like him at the office, like him no office. Co- like. Just, you know a day what? in the life of J. Jonah Jameson. If people watch... Man, Liam, do it like a documentary style? If people watch Liam Neeson beating up people for an hour and a half, I'm pretty sure they'll watch J.K. Simmons yelling at people for an hour and a half. Oh, man. That's right. what those two guys do best. Yep. They're the best at what they do. Oh, man. Like a mockumentary about J. Jonah Jameson, like about the Daily Bugle, like featuring J. Jonah Jameson. This, don't, don't get caught up on this idea. You'll be able to sleep again, you'll be writing notes, and then it'll be the ghost writer <laughs> all over again. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so yeah, that's not. So yeah, uh, this movie has moments, and every once in a while, I'm like, I see some parts, I'm like, oh, you could, you could salvage some of this and make a good movie, but they didn't do that thing. Yeah, like I, I like a lot of the Sandman stuff, but mm-hmm. reading through the the trivia sort of on on the IMDb's like you kids do, uh, there was. The part where, I don't know if there's a screenwriter, if it's one of the producers, but like, okay, well, they had this original story, and then they added this element, and keeps talking about how they keep adding elements on top of it, and then at one point, you got the, they get where they're like, okay, well, we need to split this into two movies to properly do all this. And they're like, but we didn't know how to do a climax in the middle of the story, so we didn't. And so it's just <laughs> a kind of long, not very well done movie with yeah, too would... much and not enough in it at the same time. Yeah, that's... Um... I tell I tell everyone, everyone I, I still maintain you could do, you could do it. I think I say cut Gwen Stacy. It's, it's weird to put a cake from the comics in a completely mm-hmm. different role, like down the road. Like if you have a female adversary, or whatever. But still, in this movie, cut it. We have two mil two films already, and the Mary Jane Peter Parker relationship mambo. Oh gosh, she's let's just bitch. yeah. Let's just let's just let let him be happy for a movie. Let him be happily dating and. You know, she can get kidnapped or something like that for the big scary fight, but no, yeah. no angsty relationship problems. Uh, then you can plenty of stuff with Harry. You can get uh, Peter in the black suit. You can even fit in Sandman. But if you do all of those, I say Venom can only appear right at the end. Uh, in the comics, at one point, as I told Sam earlier, uh, one of the times they stopped Sandman, it's Venom like bites his head off, and the venom on Venom's teeth is so corrosive that it stops him from regenerating. So that's what that's how they get rid of him at one point, uh, and I think that'd be a perfect end. Just Sandman just keeps coming back, and Peter can't beat him, and then just you see just this black mass bite his head off, and then Peter's like, "What the fuck is that?" And then the black slowly peels back, and Eddie Brock's face, and he goes, "Hey, Parker!" Just bam, cut the credits, <laughs> and then you gotta wait for four to see what happens, because then fucking four would be amazing. It'd be a whole better yeah. movie. You have plenty of stuff there to do a movie, and, <laughs> and if only. I'm not a fan of how they. It seems to me like they wanted to have... I, mean, I don't even know what they wanted to do with Harry in this movie. No one knows. Harry's plot in this movie is so bizarre, because it starts out... Because he's kind of like been building revenge for all, through all of two, mm-hmm. and and then at the beginning of this movie, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go out and kill Spider-Man, and then tries to, and then gets injured and loses his memory. So he's all happy, Harry, for a little while, and things mm-hmm. are back to normal. And then he... Starts to regain his memory, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna kill you again." Like it, it was like they needed action early on, but then didn't like know how to like have him lose and then mm. stay away while they did all the other stuff mm-hmm. without him like going back to the way he was and being with Mary Jane and being happy. And it, it, 
It didn't flow at all. Yeah, a lot of things don't flow in this movie. Uh, but I think what really that and a lot of other things we feel like, okay, Sam Raimi wanted to do this Sandman movie. And apparently so to McGuire, this one the yeah. Sandman movie. And they're like, oh, well, I guess we need to just, we need to do Harry because we sort of built that up. We, we need to do something with it. So, okay, we'll yeah. toss that in there. And, okay. And I guess the producers were like, producers, Venom, Venom yeah. makes money. Yeah, producers were like, Venom, we need more Venom. Put some Venom in here. And then we'll put like, well, we need another villain. Let's just hack in a terrible version of Venom. And you just had the symbiote just sort of randomly fall, and, and then someone else was like, "Oh, we need more hot girls." I'm like, put in Gwen Stacy. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, just Venom comes down to random like me or whatever falls to the park instead of you like you introduce the character of uh, Jameson's son, who's the astronaut. And like the beginning of the movie, the first like seventeen minutes is voiceover, and then a song. And then a quiet dialogue scene. That's how I want my comic book movies to start. It's nice, slow, and <laughs> just nothing happened. I mean, I they start off with a spaceship crashing, fucking right outside of New York. That'd oh, be yeah, awesome. Like, would, like, yeah, it just starts in the the like the command shuttle, and like just like shit's going wrong. Yeah. And, like, and then people be like, "This is a fucking Spider-Man <laughs> movie." Yeah. Like, what's that like? <laughs> And Spider-Man like, catches the plane in his web or something. He makes a giant web to help him land safely in the middle yeah. of New York. Fucking all sorts of cool shit you could do, but no, let's let's do voiceover and then uh, and then we'll do a song because her contract says she needs to sing three songs in this movie. <laughs> so you can songs in this movie just because I know Clayton watches this. This is the theme song of the Black Spider Man. Would you guys talked about how that was in this movie a lot? And I didn't really theme believe song. you. Another the Black Spider Man. But it's pretty much just constantly playing throughout the entire <laughs> it's just, movie. It's just on a loop, which is why after Clayton wants to see what this stuff in the next time he sees me, he's gonna go, fuck you. <laughs> Ah, uh, because, yeah, oh. that, gets, that gets stuck in his head in the worst kind of way. And there's only one line. That's the best part. Only one <laughs> lyric. No other lines. Um. We only have three movies left. We only have three movies left, and two of them are very exciting. Yeah. And one, and of, them one is, of them is very not exciting. One of them will make for a good video afterwards. <laughs> is, am I going to lose my mind this time? Am I just going to scream right. fuck 20 times? And me just laughing hysterically. <laughs> it's good on the other side. I, I try to take um, down. But yeah, next up, we've got uh, X-Men First Class, which you I have not seen. seen. I so have not is, seen. Yeah, I didn't want to go to theaters, because honestly, like I said in other videos, I've just never been a big X-Men guy. And I'm sure it's very good, and I have no doubt I'm going to really enjoy it. Uh, just, it wasn't the sort of thing I was going to go out of my way to go find. And it was marketed super poorly. Uh, they, like, they released like a promo image that looked like it was, like I did it in Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Like, and like there was, it wasn't a trailer until like a couple weeks before it came out. It was... Mm-hmm. Not handled well for how good a movie it actually is. Um, At that point, though, I don't know how you market that because you've had three ones in a different, in sort of a different franchise with the same characters, and then you had sort of a big bust sort of a movie. Even if like the Wolverine character is very popular, it was not a very good movie. Yeah. And you're trying to come out with this, which is a reboot, but not a reboot. It's Some, not a uh, reboot. It's it's in continuity. It's a prequel. Sequel. It's mostly in continuity. Like this. I, I think at this point we're gonna say that X Men Origins Wolverine is mostly in continuity, and <laughs> this movie is probably continuity, maybe continuity. Yeah, I was gonna say because like the Emma Frost bit is not does not make sense, and then there's like, as they deal with Cerebro a bit in first class. Okay. And it's, like, especially having watched it now pretty recently. Um, it's totally different from what they said before. Kind of, but it's all just based on, like, one line that Professor X says. Mm. So he's like, oh, he helped me build it. And you're like, well, maybe he helped you build that one mm. and not the first one. Mm. It just, it's a little weird, but I, I really enjoy it, so I'm um, anxious to see your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I hope it's not as gay as the last X-Men movie. It's, uh, they were so... Kind of gay. <laughs> it's kind of gay. <laughs> well, you know... It's... The X-Men are kind of gay? What? <laughs> Uh, um, we're just going to lose completely the semblance of an analogy and just go straight to all the X-Men are gay now, and their parents are ashamed of that. Well, I mean... We tried. Fan fiction writers love Magneto and Professor X from this movie. Have you tried not being a mutant? <laughs> I think. I think oh that's, man, 
Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're done. Uh, we had to push through tonight because there's not going to be a night where I said, let's, yeah, because we're only going to have maybe nights of one movie at a time and we didn't want. I, I, I know I couldn't face a night of like, all right, let's sit down to just watch Spider Man 3. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do 40 minutes of driving on a night just to see Spider Man 3. Like all the. All the crap that we've gone through, all the terribleness, I still don't think I could face that, even if it's in. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time with Hulk. We might have to try to find some time, somewhere to do... <laughs> to go right from Hulk, Hulk to kick ass? Yeah, because... Oh, man, that's a, that's a bad thing. <laughs> it's got Sam in it. Yeah. It has the Ghost Rider in it. <laughs> yeah. There's also this Eric Bonner in it. So. He was good in Funny People. Was he? Yeah. I was not a fan of Funny People. Really? It, it had no structure. It was just stuff happening, which, I mean, some of the stuff was pretty entertaining, but not all the stuff, and it just sort of dragged after a while. And I really didn't care for Adam Sandler's character. Hmm. Like, in the first half, the second half, once he got better, I was like, okay, I, I don't really care for how you're reacting to this. And, um... I don't know. It's a little, it's a little meandering in its attention. Yeah, I mean, it does, it does, it did have some pacing issues overall, but I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the worst movie I've seen. That would be Goodbye Dragon Inn, followed by the Fury <laughs> Agent of Shield. Fury <laughs> Agent of Shield. But enough about everything. But we're we're supposed to be talking about Spider Man Three. Boo, boo, hiss. J. Jonah Jameson. Boo, hiss. Oh, but video game, right? The new video game, the new Amazing Spider-Man video game is supposed to be like Spider-Man 2, which if you haven't played, stop watching this video now and go play. I'm going to go play.